What's up YouTube world, it's Ben from How to Sand a Floor. In this video I'm going to point out some of the atrocities that I have seen committed on floors in YouTube videos. So if you find this video helpful and helps you avoid making some of the, committing some of the same atrocities, then please click like and click subscribe. The first video that we're going to criticise here, I'm, I'm trying not to hate, I'm just trying to help people. Um, the first video we're watching is refinishing hardwood floors, costs and Home Depot rentals. The first thing that I can see straight away is that he's using a square buff, which is um, a big, it's like a palm sander, but massive. And all it does is kind of just wobble a bit like this. And um, he is sanding a pitch pine floor, um, or as they call it in America, hard pine. And these floors are absolutely terrible to sand, especially when they're really old and they've got deep dents in them. It's a very sappy wood, so it clogs up the abrasives. I've said before about these machines, these square buffs, they should only really be used for the very last pass on the floor to make it ready for the um, stain. So to give it a, a, a scratch pattern that is the same all over the floor and right into the corners, and you're usually doing it with a, uh, a 120 grit, but the surface area on these things are massive and you can't you can't sand floors with them, which you, you're about to see perfectly in this video. So let's have a little watch. So he's turned it on and now you can see a lot of uh, a big change straight away. So all of the undented areas, the high spots, they, they get sanded off straight away and it it looks like it's making a big difference and it is making a big difference but it's not going to get down into the the gaps and um, or into the dips in the floor or the dents um, so let's just watch a bit more of this see that okay pause 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 look at that you can see all the the, um, the scratches and dents and stuff that were done on the previous sanding. Like he's only sanded the peaks of the floor off. All the little dents and stuff. That square buff is not going to touch it. And he, that's basically it. That's what he's done on his floor. He's using a really coarse grit as well. Absolutely ter shocking. Shocking. I feel sorry for the guy. This must have been soul destroying. Now he's using a palm sander, which is just, oh my God, like he's, oh, shoot me. If I had to sand the edges of a pitch pine floor with a, with a palm sander, oh my goodness, just shoot me. Oh look, he's tickling it, tickling it. The floor's laughing. Yeah, not doing a single thing. Congratulations. Look at that floor, look at it. The dents and scratches all around. Oh my goodness, he doesn't get that out. That's not how your floor should look. There are so many videos on YouTube um, and pictures I see on blogs and stuff. People that sand their floor once and then they make a how-to blog. And this is how they've got their floor looking and they, they think that it looks great, which is funny, because if I did that, I wouldn't get paid. Yeah, when, when people do it themselves, this is absolutely fine. Look, and he's, he's trying to fix it up, but look, it's, n it's not working. It's absolutely terrible. This is hilarious. This is why you need to wear a respirator, a mask. Do you see the airborne dust? Oh my goodness, this is a travesty. This is just terrible. This is definitely the worst of the lot. Let's, let's fast forward a bit. Okay, I've just gone and skipped ahead towards the end, um, and uh, as you can see here, it's just, he's lacquering it now. Um, I think he, he's using a, an oil-based um, polyurethane. I think he's sealing it first. Look at the state of this floor. It is an absolute disaster. That looks, 
it, it would have been better if he would have just put a coat over it to make it shiny. Now he's highlighted all the dents and dings and scratches. It looks terrible. From start to finish, everything took two days. But if he'd have sanded it prop properly, that probably would have taken about two weeks. If he wanted to sand it down enough to get all of those, all of the old finish off, look, it looks absolutely atrocious. He should have just put a lacquer coat over the top to make it shiny and he would have got a better effect, I think. Enough of this. Um, if you want to watch this video, as I say, it's refinishing hardwood floors, costs and Home Depot rentals, DVB, DVB, DVB. It's one of the highest viewed videos on the subject, so make sure you go and check that out. It might actually be in the, um, the sidebar, wherever that is, so uh, check that out. Let's see what's up next. Okay, the next video we have is hardwood floor refinishing by trial and error, or as I like to call it, hardwood floor refinishing by error, 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 by Matthias Wandel. So this has got the most views on YouTube. This guy is some sort of DIYer, um, but he, I can't bash this guy so much because it's almost like he's on purpose doing the most ridiculous things to his floor that he possibly can. It's like, I don't want to. I don't want to search on the internet whatsoever. I just want to create machinations in my brain, and um, and just do random stuff to my floor and see if it works. Because um, this is literally a train wreck, and um, to pretend that this is even a um, that someone that intended their floor to look like this is is obviously uh, he says it himself. That's not what he wants. So let's take a look at this. So basically what he's doing is he's using a a handheld belt sander which um, I mean I've done it before 10 years ago and um, I mean it's, it's very tough to see on these uh, videos like how much um, you know how much they've actually managed to get the, the old finish off the floor or the dents and scratches it doesn't look that great now he's just decided to start scraping the floor with a corner scraper now is it there's a bit of a difference between a proper floor scraper when you have hand scraped hardwood floors and then just a corner scraper like this and um, and yeah he, he creates this this thing this thing to unbelievable he's created this thing to try and, and um, make it so that he can scrape the floor with this tiny thing from standing up it's just what a joke. Actually, it's kind of a clever idea. I, I don't know, it's, I've got to give him some credit. It's, look, he's got a little spring on it and, it's, and, it, and it helps to hold it down. I don't know, quite a funny idea. Maybe the uh, hardwood floor scraping guy should actually take a leaf out of this guy's book and create a system that you can do it from standing up. Because scraping hardwood floors by hand is a slog. I mean, that is hard work, you can't, you know, that is not for the faint of heart. So let's, let's skip ahead a bit here. Put, putting this, putting this um, floor sander on the edge of a, on the end of a stick like this, this is, uh, again, I mean, <laughs> it's it's kind of genius but uh also terrible like oh it's not going to make life easier honestly it's it's you're not your floor's not going to look good it's the most important thing like yeah you can work hard but you need your floor to look good because that's the thing that's going to last for, for years the hard work will be forgotten oh absolutely hilarious Oh my, he's, he's brushing the dust over the, the wood to fill the gaps, which is just going to come out when he finishes it with the lacquer. And now he's scraping with that on a pole, scraping the finish over the floor. Just, here's my advice, okay? Don't refinish your floors by trial and error. Do some Googling. 
Do not listen to people that have done it themselves once on their own home. Listen to professionals. There are so, there are so many professionals that upload videos and they don't get any views on YouTube. Some of the people I know put up stuff that I think is unreal in terms of skill and uh, they don't get any views on YouTube. People like this get views, it's just, it's sad. Don't listen to professionals, that's what I'm saying. Don't do it by trial and error, that's ridiculous. Okay, enough of this. What have we got up next? We have how to refinish hardwood floors by skill power tools. This how to refinish hardwood floors video I saw, this is posted in September 2010. This is long before I ever posted a video online. And this, again, this is not too bad. I can't hate the guy. He's definitely probably a better presenter than me, unfortunately. Uh, if any of you have watched more of my videos, then you know that I'm not a very good speaker. I can't communicate very well and I don't present very well. So, but this guy does present fairly well and he has got some good um, tips on it. His tips on filling the gaps are good. Um, the only thing that I don't really like about his videos are that the um, he's using a finishing sander to start with. And he has started with a 36 grit, which will make it a lot easier. But what these videos never show you is that when you start with a, a sander with these massive surface areas, is it, it takes ages. If you've got a floor that's perfectly flat and it's in very good condition, sometimes it's possible to do this. But um, you can see the wear marks by the front door. Let's watch a bit of this. Uh, skip forward a little bit. So yeah, similar to the, the previous video, when you're using a finishing sand like this, and it cuts, all YouTube videos are cut, obviously, but um, you know, you don't know how much time you're cutting out. I know that if you've got a knackered floor, these finishing sanders can take forever to get the finish out, to get all the dents and scratches out, to get the floor clean and ready for a finish. Detail sanding, here we go. He calls it detail sanding. Detail sanding is usually referred to as the, the, the very corners. So he has got very small edges because he used that, um, that uh, finishing sander, but these two palm sanders are nowhere near powerful enough to, um, to get the job done. So, uh, at least in a time efficient manner, that looks good. It's got to be quick and it's got to look good. Usually with, with machines like this, if, if you do it quickly, then it's not going to look good. But if, you, if it looks good, then you've taken forever on it. That, you can tell by the way that's swirling, it's just a random orbital, it's not a, a geared orbital, like the Festool which I might have a link to in the description. Um, that's on a, It's on Amazon. The Festool, that's the one hand sander that I would use on, on floors. If I wanted to sand a floor by hand, I would use the Festool Rotex RO150. Right, what do we have here? He's doing the finishing. Let's hurry this up a bit. Here's a great tip, using, the, uh, using a trowel to stop yourself from getting any edging that you want to protect, but he's brushing all the way around the edge of the floor first, which I mean, I, I, I don't know, I've, I've seen this varathane before, but in my experience, you want to just do the edges in the, in the section that you're doing, and then you roll it out, or mohair, or T-bar, and then you brush the next bit. You don't want to brush all the way room like the way around the room like he has there, because it dries out and it can cause marks. It looks terrible. The other thing is the way he's he's uh, he's just poured all the way the length down the board, and now he's rubbing it like I don't know where that's disappearing to, but usually what he's just poured down there would be enough to to coat half the room. So what what he's using is a mohair, um, not a mohair roller, a uh, mohair pad
you know what it doesn't look too bad um, I mean obviously you can't see up close um, and obviously he seems like he doesn't do he doesn't do this every day but he is handy with tools but um, that doesn't look too bad but I still think save yourself some time that those big sanders with the multiple heads they're supposed to be for after you finish with the, the floor sander and the edge sander it's it, that's, that's the thing that gets it really smooth and gets the scratches out the linear scratch marks as he says in that video that it's got a random pattern and it doesn't really matter uh, which way you use it because it just polishes it smooth makes it really nice and smooth so um, again check out this video uh, how to refinish hardwood floors by skill power tools of the three that we've looked at so far I mean that's uh, by far the best the next video we have here is how to sand and save a wood floor by Ron Tanner I haven't even looked through this one yet but I can just tell that we're gonna find some absolute gems in here now just look at this a layer of polyurethane and Look at what someone has done to their floor before. That is absolutely horrific. Obviously this is not his fault by the looks of it. He, he didn't do this. Someone previously had done this. I mean, that is just impressive. Okay. So he's decided to use a, uh, a handheld belt sander, which many people do. Many people for some reason think that it's a good idea to sand the floors by hand. I just don't quite know how much work is involved so yeah he's just absolutely blowing dust out all over the place here um, which he then decides to uh, hoover behind him look he's just t changed the clip and now he's got the hoover behind him it's just I mean even with this belt sander it's you're not going to be pressing as hard but it's just gonna take so long you're gonna spend so much time on your feet and um, uh, on your sorry on your hands and knees um, like look at this see when when you first when he's first started this and he's made he's made a bit of an impact already he is he hasn't he's not going to have realized how long that this is going to take him it's only after about half an hour to an hour is when he's going to go hold on a minute this is going to take forever even now you can see that the sander is doing the peaks and uh, all of these little dents that were put in last time by the previous person to sand this floor um they're still there so all these little dents and things you can see them they're shining in the floor a lot of people will then tend to do is start angling the sander to try and get them out which is where the problems came from in the first place the reason why those dents and dings there are from from the previous sanding is because someone couldn't get, get a bit of dirt or a dent out so they angled the sander to make it faster and it ends up making it look atrocious what you should be doing instead is using a floor sander or an edger to remove more wood until it's clean and flat not dig into these little sections and um, create these dips that just look absolutely horrific so I'm just going to fast forward here to this section where he's using alcohol or something to clean off the floor I think to clean the dirt off the floor I haven't got the sound on so but can you see all the darkness in the grain of the wood there and right now you can see even before he's put anything on it there's, it's really dark in the grain that's dirt that's gotten into the soft grain this is red oak so that the, the the soft grain in red oak is is really open and dirt can get down deep into it so you can see all of the the dirt that's still in the grain he needs to sand the floor a lot more to get that out so these videos will never do justice just to how bad these floors look when they're done so don't take these people people's advice you know it's you know if you search for professional like if you search for floor sanding in New York and you see videos you don't see people on their hands and knees sanding the middle of the floor with a handheld sander you know you, you're gonna see people with stand-up sanders getting it done in a reasonable time all of the people that use hand tools like this or orbital sanders because they're too scared to use a, a floor sander 
they don't take longer they just never get it done properly it will it never looks good i mean look at this right now look the floor looks atrocious and is that is he lacquering now no he's just cleaning it i think i'm not sure and just like everyone else they take pictures of it or record a video of it looking all shiny and pat themselves on the back when uh, it actually looks terrible i just wanted to show you this little gem the floor is done and this floor in particular you're going to see some dings it is not worth sanding the floor down that far to cut, to get to those dings particularly on a hard-working floor like this okay so he says it's not worth sanding the floor down enough to get these dents out the problem is these dents are far shallower than you think they are they look quite deep but they're usually about half a mil maybe a millimeter and it is worth sanding the floor down enough to get them out because you want the floor to look new every time you sand the floor you want to bring it back to new and then you knacker it out and then you sand it again and bring it back to new this is someone that's just given up they've given up trying to get these marks out he's probably spent like four days sanding this floor and now he's just given up all hope of removing these dents and dings so uh i'm sorry about this video i don't want to be a hater i don't want to put other people down just want to help people prevent um, from making these same mistakes so if you did find it helpful then please click like click subscribe on my face and um, I should have some links to more of my videos right here so click them click them now click